Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School, February 5, 2023. Lesson number 10 of the second quarter. The title of our lesson is Resume of Those Called. Background scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 18 to 31. In the Sunday School material that we are using, the Standard Lesson Commentary 2022-2023. Let's start with a prayer. Lord, we will be studying with regards to the message of the cross and with regards to the resume of those called. We will be studying chapter 1 of First Corinthians. We pray, Lord, that you will guide us and you will help us understand your message for us through this lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we are in the second quarter. The theme for the second quarter is From Darkness to Light. Second quarter covers the months of December, January, and February. This will be the theme for the third quarter and the fourth quarter. So quarter at a glance, the lessons of this quarter give evidence of cause and effect, relationship at work. God's call serves as the cause, and the effect is the presence of his salvation available for all people. So we are in Unit 3 of the second quarter. Unit 3 is the month of February. And we are looking at uh, epistles. For today, we will look at 1 Corinthians. The quarter's final lesson takes us to the New Testament epistles and their teachings on the inclusive nature of God's call. God's assessment does not always match human evaluation. As a result, he may call those people whom the world considers lowly and unremarkable. Yung mga tinatawag ng Panginoon para sa kanyang plano, in God's plan, para magkaroon ng role sa kanyang God's plan ay maaaring sila yung mga lowly and unremarkable. Hindi sila yung mga makapangyarihan at mga noble. So, as uh, the procedure that we do, first we go through the scripture once through sa English, sa Tagalog. Then later on, we will go back to these scriptures verse by verse, phrase by phrase, and word for word to analyze them. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 18 For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand, demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews, and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards, not many were influential, not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. 
God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Sa Tagalog, versikulo 18, sa mga napapahamak ang aral tungkol sa pagkamatay ni Kristo sa krus ay kahangalan. Ngunit sa atin na mga inililigtas, ito'y kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Sapagkat nasusulat, sisirain ko ang karunungan ng marurunong at pawawalang kabuluhan ang katalinuhan ng matatalino. Ano ang kabuluhan ngayon ng marurunong? ng mga eskriba, ng mga mahusay na debatista sa daigdig na ito. Ipinakikilala ng Diyos na ang karunungan ng sanlibotang ito ay kamangmangan. Sapagka, ayon sa karunungan ng Diyos, hindi niya itinulot na siya ay makilala ng tao sa pamamagitan ng karunungan ng sanlibotang ito. Sa halip, minarapat niyang ang mga nananalig sa kanyay iligtas sa pamamagitan ng mabuting balita na aming ipinangangaral ngunit ipinalalagay naman ng sanlibutan na isang kahangalan. Ang mga hudyo'y humihingi ng kababalaghan bilang katunayan. Karunungan naman ang inahanap ng mga Griego. Ngunit ang pinangangaral na may si Kristong ipinako sa krus, isang katitisuran sa mga hudyo at kahangalan sa mga hentil. Subalit sa mga tinawag ng Diyos, maging Hudyo at Griego, si Kristo ang kapangyarihan at karunuan ng Diyos. Sapagkat ang inakala nilang kahangalan ng Diyos ay karunungang higit kaysa lahat ng karunungan ng tao. At ang inaakala naming kahinaan ng Diyos ay lakas na higit sa lahat ng kalakasan ng tao. Mga kapatid, alalahanin ninyo ang inyong katayuan nang kayo'y tawagin ng Diyos. Iilan lamang sa inyo ang sa paningin ng sanlibutan ay marunong, makapangyarihan at maharlika. Subalit, pinili ng Diyos ang sa palagay ng sanlibutan ay kahangalan upang hiyain ang marunong at ang mahina sa turing ng sanlibutan upang hiyain ang malalakas. Pinili niya ang mga itinuturing na hamak, walang halaga at walang kabuluhan sa sanlibutan ito upang pawalang halaga ang mga itinuturing na dakila sa sanlibutan. Kaya't walang maaring magmalaki sa harapan ng Diyos. Sa Kanya mula ang ating pakikipag-isa kay Kristo Isos na ginawang karunungan natin sa pamamagitan niya tayo'y pinawalang salang ng Diyos pinapalaging banal at piniligtas. Kaya nga tulad ng nasasabi sa kasulatan ang Panginoon ang dapat magmalaki ng may ibig magmalaki. Key verse is 1 Corinthians 1:28 to 29. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things, the things that are not, to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before Him. Lesson A. Number one, identify an appropriate context in which a first century Christian might boast. Ano dapat ang, papano dapat ang mga sinauna? Yung panahon ni Paul, first century. Ang, ang ano dapat ang kanilang ipagmalaki? Saan dapat nakalagay ang kanilang pagmamalaki? Bilang Kristiyano. Explain the difference between the world's wisdom and God's wisdom. Ayan. Anong pagkakaiba? Pananaw ng tao at pananaw ng Diyos. Kaisipan ng tao at kaisipan ng Diyos. Share a personal example of worldly wisdom that he or she had rejected. Ito yung challenge bawat isa sa atin. Mayroon ba tayong example sa ating buhay? Worldly wisdom na ating isinantabi upang bigyang daan ang God's wisdom para 
yon ang gamitin natin na uh, gabay sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay. Okay, lesson outline. Hmm, introduction, source of sermon, tsaka lesson context. Then, Roman numeral number 1, verse 18 to 25, word of the cross. Roman numeral number 2, 26 to 31, calling of the humble. Then, doctrine of the cross. Okay, so, introduction, source of sermons. Uh, sabi rito, yung mga matatagal ng mga preachers, it, paano nila dinidevelop ang sermon nila? And yung ating commentator, he gave three. They study the Bible, illustrations coming from their readings, and personal experiences. Yan ang pinanggagalingan kung paano dinidevelop ng mga mga ministro ang kanilang sermon. The need to preach weekly can create a lot of pressure, <laughs> sabi niya. Pero biruin mo naman, linggo-linggo, gumagawa ng sermon. Kaya yung mga marami sa mga preachers, eh, nangihiram. Hindi niya ginamit yung sinabing nangongopia. Pero open and close quotation, they borrow sermons from other preachers. And today, the internet make thousands of new sermons available weekly. Eh, mayroong mga pastor, sabi niya na ginagamit na lang, nangongopia na lang yung, yung mga sermon nila. Sabi nga niya, a friend of mine has cynically hypothesized that it will not belong that four or five preachers will be left who construct original sermons. Malamang, sabi niya, baka mayroon daw Nagbibiro yung kanyang kaibigan. Ma, baka apat limang preacher na lang ang talagang gumagawa ng original sermon. Yung others ay nangongopia na lang. <laughs> The Apostle Paul had no internet source for his sermon preparation. So ito si, si, si Paul. Yan. San nanggagaling yung, nang yung kanyang sermon? He draws it from his Great knowledge of scripture. Binabasa niya ang mga scripture. Inoobserbahan niya, observation of life, and personal experience. Yan si Paul. At sabi nga, doon sa other scripture, Paul himself is not a gifted public speaker. Hindi siya gifted na public speaker. Yan ang sabi niya sa sarili niya. Ah, yan din ang sinasabi ng iba. Hindi gifted itong si Paul na public speaker. You can read that in 1 Corinthians 2.1.4 And I was with you in weakness and in fear and my speech were not plausible words of wisdom. Even so, his preaching resulted in church being planted in the city of Corinth. Pero, sabi niya, pero napaka-epektibo ng kanyang mga sermon. And yan nga ang proeba the church in the city of Corinth. And this, ch- this church in the city of Corinth had impacted hundreds of lives for many years. Naging batayan ng maraming church, itong church of Corinth. Maraming struggles, maraming struggles, conflicts, dun sa, dun sa church na yon. And at this time, isa sa mga struggle na yon ay conflict. Now, lesson context. The city of Corinth. O, oh, yan. Mga 50 miles from Athens. Malapit lang, 50 miles lang. Today's, in today's uh, time, that's about one hour train lang. Isang oras lang kung ngayon. Ba, sabi niya, the distance was much greater in terms of culture and history. Tignan nga natin ang pagkakaiba. Sabi, pero yung kanilang culture, kanilang history, yung Athens at saka yung Corinth, malayong malayo, malaking malaki ang pagkakaiba. Athens had been the Greek center for philosophy, religion, education, and government. Yan ang Athens. Diba? Center for philosophy, religion, education, and government. So, kilala natin hanggang ngayon, kilala natin 
mga philosophers, Athenian philosophers, sino-sino? Si Socrates, si Plato, si Aristotle. Hanggang ngayon, pinag-aaralan sa mga eskwilaan. How about Corinth? In comparison, Corinth was an industrial working class city. Yun naman. Doon naman ang kagalingan ng Corinth. Isang industrial working class city. It is thriving. Ma, ma, marang niya. Ma, ma progreso. Ma progreso. And ang isa sa pinakadahilan ay yung Jolkos. Ang Jolkos, Jolkos, an ancient railway system. An ancient railway system that transported small boats and cargo overland between agency and the Gulf of Corinth. Doon, doon nang gagaling yung kanilang ekonomiya. Itong uh, Corinth, yung Jolkos, ancient railway station. Itinatawid nila yung mga barko at cargo doon sa lupa, doon sa railway station from agency and Gulf of Corinth. Itinatawid nila doon. Tinatawid, but by land. Pero malaki ang bayan. The fee for using it were high, making current a wealthy city. Dahil doon ay ma- maunlad ang current. Ano naman ang benefit kung bakit, la, bakit gagamitin yung railway? Sabi rito, the merchants saved days of sailing around Pilopon- Peloponnesian Peninsula, which is treacherous. And Plenty of, plentiful pirates. Ah, yun naman. Gusto na nila magbayad ng malaki. Bakit? Ay napakadelikado yung iikutan nila. Yan o. Oh, treacherous. At maraming pirata doon. Well, canal built was eventually built in 1893. Ganyang katagal na railway ang ginagamit. Acts 18 records Paul's first visit to Corinth in AD 51-52. Yan. Diniscuss doon sa Book of Acts, chapter 18, yung first visit ni, ni Paul sa Corinth. And that was 20 years after conversion. Noong chapter 9, na-convert siya. Pero yung kanyang visit, after 20 years, binisit, pumunta siya sa Corinth. Ha? And in, in AD 51 to 52. And Paul wrote 1 and 2 Corinthians between AD 54 and 57 while in Ephesus. Habang siya ay nakakulong, doon niya sinulat yung 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Nakakatanggap siya ng mga reports of several issues troubling Corinthian congregation. Yung congregation ng Corinthians doon sa ng Corinth ay maraming problema. Nakakatanggap siya ng report, may mga problema. One of the problem, factions. Yan, may mga factions. Members of the congregation had been rallying around specific leaders. Doon sa 1 Corinthians 1, 2, sabi niyan, I follow Paul. Isang paksyo naman, I follow Apollos. Yung iba naman ay, I follow Jesus Christ, etc. May mga factions. May mga factions. Doon sa Church of Corinth. May mga problema. He reminded his readers that he had come to Corinth to preach the gospel. Period. <laughs> Yun sabi niya. Wala, wala sa amin, hindi kayo, hindi dapat kagkakaroon ng faction. Bakit? Nung pumunta ako dyan, sabi niya, eh, mabuting balita lang ang, ang aking dinala sa inyo. Period. Wala na. This led him to recount the motives and action of his initial visit to Corinth. Today's text. Kaya ni-recall na yon Nire-recall niya ngayon yung kanyang ginawa nung kanyang first visit. Okay? So this is now the lesson. Word of the cross. Word, first, new, uh, Roman number. One, word of the cross. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. 18a. What is the message of the cross? What is the message of the cross? And this message of the cross is foolishness to whom? To those who are perishing. Well, the message of the cross that the plan of God to make salvation available to man is through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Diba? The message of the cross resurrection. The message of the cross redemption through the cross. Yun yung mga message of the cross. Analysis. 
The Greek word translates message is logos. Yan, yun daw, yun daw message, the message of the cross. Pero yung Greek word is translated as logos with small letter. Example, and whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, that is logos, word in small letter. Or logos in capital letter, and that is how it was used in John 1.1. In the beginning was the word in capital letter. In our text, the one that we are talking about, it is in the small letter, word of the cross, the message of the cross. Histo historical reality of Jesus' death by Roman crucifixion had drawn different reactions, and Paul assessed their responses. Ano ang mga reaction ng tao doon sa crucifixion ni Jesus? What were the, the responses? And this is the one that was analyzed by Paul. Those who interpreted the message of Jesus that as foolishness are lost and perishing in their unforgiven sins. Yun na. Yung ang nag-iisip na kalukuhan, kalukuhan na ang misaya ay ipako sa cross, nakakaya. Ang mga ito, sabi ni Paul ay sila yung mga perishing in their unforgiven sins. And Paul encountered this mindset in Athens. Yan. Noong uh, 1732. Na-encounter niya itong mga to. Kasi nangangaral siya doon. Dinidibati niya yung mga tao doon. Pero they mock him. When they heard of the resurrection, because that is the message of the cross, resurrection, what do the people do? They mock him. But others said, we'll hear you again. Mayroong mga interesado rin. Yan yung mga, mga different responses. But to us, verse 18b, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Doon sa mga perishing, it is foolishness. But to us, it is the power of God. Yan. On the other hand, those who see the power of God to forgive sins through such seemingly shameful event are the ones who are saved. Yung mga naka, nakikita ng, ang plano ng Diyos ay upang iligtas ang tao sa pamamagitan nitong pagpako kay, kay Jesus sa cross ay sila yung mga sila yung mga uh, maliligtas at nakikita nila yung power of God through the cross. The power of God to raise Jesus from death. Ito ngayon, on the other hand. So dalawa, those who do not believe and think it that as foolishness, those who see that it is the power of God on the cross. Power of God to what? To save mankind. This forms the centerpiece of this of Paul's discussion. The culturally shameful execution of Jesus on the cross, in fact, demonstrated the power and wisdom of God. Ito ngayon ang centerpiece na yung mukhang nakakayang pangyayari na ang misaya ay ipako sa krus in a most simple, most brutal way. But through this, God is showing His power. Through this, God is showing His wisdom because it is beyond the comprehension of man. Paanong mangyayaring itong nakakayang ito ay kasama doon sa plano ng Diyos upang iligtas ang, ban, mga, ang lahat ng bansa at ang lahat ng tao. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Binanggit ni Paul ito, na ito ay sinulat ni Isaiah in chapter 29.14. He, Isaiah wrote this more than 700 years this time in the time of Paul. More than 700 years ago. That context. He, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligent, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will prostrate. It is in each context that verse reveals the Lord's agenda to show that those who believe that their human reasoning is impeccable will be devastated. Yun ang ibig sabihin. Yung mga tao na naniniwala na hindi kami magkakamali. Impeccable. 
Yung aming reasoning ay malinaw, clear. Hindi pwedeng magkamali. Sabi yan, patutunayan ko na walang silbi yung kanilang pinakamatalinong pag-iisip. If they do not include the works and ways of God of the Bible. 1 Corinthians 3.19 For the wisdom of this world is fully with God. Kung, kung sa ating pagrarasong ay hindi natin isesinasama ang Panginoon. If they do not include the work and ways of God, then, sabi dyan, it will collapse. The human thought will collapse. Where is the wise person? This is the first of four rhetorical questions. Yan, may four, four rhetorical question. Rhetorical question is, hindi na kinakailangan ng sagot. Itong four questions ito. Where is the where is the wise person? Where is the teachers of the law? Yan, di ba? Where is the philosopher of this age? And has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? These four rhetorical questions as Paul begins his salvo against the so-called wisdom of the world. The, world, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. Wise person. Ito yung first question. Where is the wise person? The wise person likely referred to those stiff in the Greek philosophical tradition. Talagang ayaw nang ibukas ang kanilang isipan. Masyado nang uh, stiff, masyadong matigas, matarik. Ha? What does this babbler wish to say? Yan yung kanilang mga reaksyon no? doon sa 17, nung nagpapaliwanag si Paul. Ano ba itong pinagsasabi nito, madaldal na to? He seemed to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching of Jesus and the resurrection. The next question, where is the teacher of the law? This is the second group. Ito yung pangalawa tinitira dito ni Paul. Sino yung mga teacher of the law? Ha? Huh? The, this question targets the Jewish scholars who often opposes Jesus. Yan, ito yung mga kalaban niya. The chief priests and scribes heard it and were seeking a way to destroy him. Mga patunay, mga patunay na sarado na ang kanilang isipan and they would like to put down the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is the philosopher of this age? Oh, sino naman ito mga ito? This question points to people who always seek to argue a point to prove themselves right. Such an argumentative spirit resulted in condemnation from Jesus. Talagang para lang patunayan na sobrang pilosopo na sila lang ang tama. Sila lang ang tama. Ito yung, ito yung uh, uh, salita ni Jesus. He warned those who were scrupulous in their tithing but ignored the more important matters. Sabi ni Jesus, You neglect the more, the weight, weightier matters of the law which is justice and mercy and faithfulness. Mas mahalaga sa inyo yung mga ritual at tradisyon. The implied answer to the questions we have seen to this, yeah, ito yung mga rhetorical question. Ang implied answer to that is that the wise, the teachers of the law, and the disputers are among those who are perishing. Because they don't see their clearly the message of the cross. They are perishing. They will go to hell. 20D, has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? The lesson with this question is taught many times in the Old Testament. Well, yan, maraming beses. Uh, we see that in, in Job. He leads counselors away strip and judges he makes fools. Sino ang Diyos? We see that in Ecclesiastes, which includes the pursuit of wisdom as meaningless if it does so without God. Ecclesiastes 1, to 17 I said in my heart, I have acquired great wisdom, but I perceive this also is a 
but is striving after the wind. Hangin. Bakit? Dahil ang lahat ng ito ay hindi nakapaloob sa kalooban ng Diyos. It is the storyline of several episodes in the book of Daniel. Doon din sa book ni Daniel. Pinakikita na ang dunong kung wala ang Diyos, wala. As for these four years, God gave them learning skill in all literature and wisdom. It is God gave them learning. Verse 20 and 4, Since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know Him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Paul contrasts the wisdom of God and the wisdom of the world. Yan. Pinag, 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 inehahambing, kinukumpara. God's wisdom is perfect. And He knows the end from the beginning. Mula pa nung umpisa, alam niya ang mangyayari. And it is in Isaiah 46.10. The wisdom of the world does not lead to a knowledge of God. Paul discusses this flaw in human attempts in wisdom in 1.18 to 23. There he declares that human ways of thinking that exclude God are futile, that such thinkers are without excuse. Paul's tone, human wisdom that does not acknowledge God is not wisdom at all. Kung ang tao ay mag-iisip na siya lamang, at hindi siya sa alang-alang ang kalooban ng Diyos. Sabi dito, it is not wisdom at all. Paul extends the irony to say that the magnificent preaching of the cross seems like foolishness to the self-appointed wise of the world. Kalukuhan, paanong mangyayaring plano ng Diyos na ang Misaya ay ipako sa cross? The, the height of shamefulness. The height of brutality, the pananaw ng tao, sa kanilang pananaw, ito ay foolishness. Sila yung mga self-appointed wise of the world. The height of this foolishness in their eyes would be to proclaim a message of God's salvation. <laughs> And dahil itong kalokohan nila, dapat ganito ang kaligtasan, hindi ganyan sa cross. They would proclaim a message of God's salvation. How can they believe a message from God if they do not even acknowledge God, let alone any need to be saved? Eh, kala nila, ligtas na sila. Jews demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom. Eto, Jews demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom. The desire of the Jews, of the Jewish people to see an undue amount of signs before they committed is well documented. Maraming, maraming, maraming passage sa Bible na hinahanap nito mga Jewish people ang signs. Di ba? Matthew 12.38 We wish to see a sign from you. Mark 8.11 The Pharisees came and bar- began to argue seeking for him a sign. Pakita ka ng sign. However, even the miracles of Jesus were not sufficient for some. Nakita nila yung mga miracles. The blind will see, the lame will, etc. But, <laughs> they, they keep on asking signs, signs. Jesus provided signs to prove who He was. Yan. Jesus did many other signs so that they may believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God. Ano pa? All these things that Jesus has done, Only God can do. Raising the dead. They have considered those signs inadequate or to interpret them wrongly. Inadequate daw yung mga signs na yun. No, He is not the Son of God. In Luke 11, when He cast the demons, sabi ng mga tao, some said He cast out demons by Beelzebun. Ginagamit niya yung prince of the demon na Beelzebul to cast out. It is the opposite of move toward faith. It is the opposite of a move toward faith. It is going away from faith. The Greeks, ito naman yung Greeks, so the Jews, they ask for signs. Ito naman yung Greeks. The Greeks search for wisdom like the Jews demand for signs. 
was flowed from the start and made them unable to find faith if they denied God. But we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to the Jews. Eh, to, bakit is stumbling block to the Jews? We preach Christ crucified. Biri mo. <coughs> ang, ang message natin ay Christ crucified. Itong message na to, Christ crucified, this is a stumbling block to the Jews. The idea that a Jewish peasant teacher, isang mahirap, pero nagtuturo, naggaling sa isang obscure village, walang sinabi na village, village of Nazareth, they could accomplish anything by dying on a cross. Mayroong bang mangyayari sa isang tao na nanggaling sa Nazareth, let alone to be a part of great plans, God, uh, great uh, plan of God to save mankind. He is stumbling block. That is a stumbling block to the Jews. Why? Why is it a stumbling block? Why are they What, what are they expecting? They expected a powerful military messiah. Nakasakay dapat sa chariot. Hindi yung ipinapako sa krus. Mayroon bang messiah na ganyan? Ha? Lahat na ng pinakan nakakahiyang kamatayan siya. Dapat siya ay, he is coming as a powerful military messiah. The cross was scandalous because most Jews could not accept that God's messiah would be shamefully executed like a notorious criminal. Yan. Bakit stumbling block? Because they could not accept that God's Messiah would be shamefully executed like a notorious criminal. Paul knew that this aspect of the Messiah was expected by God and prophesied. Alam ng Diyos itong mangyayaring to. Alam ng Diyos itong kaisipan na to. At yan ay binanggit ni Isaiah more than 700 years before this time. Isaiah 8.14 23b and foolishness to Gentiles. Ito naman from the point of view of these pagans. Paul characterized the pagan responses to the message of the cross as dismissal, a waste of time, a foolishness. Some refused to consider the implication of the cross because it does not fit their preconceived notion of how God should act in history. Meron ng preconceived notion. Paano ba dapat ang gawin ng Diyos? <laughs> Paano dapat ang, ang mag-isip ang Diyos? Paano dapat ang kaisipan ng Diyos? Kaya hindi nila matanggap because of this preconceived notion. Yan yung mga pagano. Yan yung mga hentil. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Pero, sabi niyan, pero, yung mga tinawag ng Diyos. Tinawag ng Diyos doon sa mga Jews. Tinawag ng Diyos doon sa mga intel. Si Kristo ang the power of God. Si Kristo ang wisdom of God. Yung call, let us discuss the call. Whom God has called. Call, the meaning depends on usage. One, speaking out in prayer. In Jeremiah, call to me and I will answer you. That was how it was used, depending on how it was, it was being used in the, in, the, in the context, in the scripture. Whom God has called. Summon, summoning as in 2 Kings. So in 2 Kings, he summoned Gehazi and said, call this Shunamai. Another usage of this call, naming someone or something as in Genesis, God called the light day, and, he, and the darkness he called night. Yeah. But the fourth it is indicating a summoning in terms of appointing by God, as in the text before us. Itong pagkakagamit ng call na to, whom God has called, this is being appointed by God can be summoning to salvation by whom you were called into fellowship of His Son. This is how it was used. The term there is, is summoning in terms of appointing by God, in terms of calling for salvation or calling to a specific task. The Holy Spirit said, 
set apart for me Saul and Barnabas for the work for which I have called them. You see, this is a specific task. Si Paul and si Barnabas being set apart for some task. The calling to receive salvation through Christ comes to everyone. Ito na yung message of yung mabuting balita. The gospel. Christ comes to everyone. We read that in John 12, 32. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Salvation through Christ comes to everyone. This call can be resisted. Resisted. And indeed, it is open. Pero, pwedeng hindi tanggapin, sabi niya. At maraming hindi tumanggap. And we see that in the book of Acts. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resisted the Holy Spirit. Even so, Paul encountered Jews who embraced Jesus as the power of God beyond any sign miracle they could expect. Marami ang tumangga kay Jesus na siya ang power of God. Paul also preached to Greeks who abandoned their worldly philosophies and accepted Jesus as the wisdom. Both in the, in the camp of Jews, both and the Greeks, meron din yung mga tumanggap doon sa minsahe ni Paul. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Paul's irony now comes in full circle in one of the most powerful verses in the New Testament. God is great, and His greatness is not hidden. God's foolishness, what seems impossibly unwise to human observers, is wiser than anything philosophers have ever dreamed of. The plans of God exceed any human expectation. Yung plano ng Diyos, from the beginning of time, hindi kinakailanman maiimagine ng tao. Paul surely personalized this. Yan. Maging si Paul, naniniwala siya sa sarili niyang kakayanan nung araw. Paul sought to be the greatest Jewish scholar. Gusto niya mag- siya maging greatest. Siya ay estudyante ng pinakamagaling na teacher, si Gamaliel. Paul's learning and mental capacity were well known. Kilala siya ng iba. Sabi ni Pistos, Paul, your great learning, kinikilala siya ng iba. Paul understood that he could never compare with the divine wisdom of God displayed in the cross of Jesus Christ. Pero, naunawa ni Paul na compared with the divine wisdom of God, he is nothing. Compared with the wisdom of God in the cross, of Jesus Christ. He is nothing. Furthermore, Paul's opponents would say that he did not recognize the death of Jesus as weakness, the failure to become, to overcome his enemies. Yan ang mga sinasabi ng mga kaaway ni Paul. Hindi nakita ni Paul na yung pagpako kay at kamatayan ni Jesus ay weakness. Yun ang sinasabi ng mga tao. Hindi niya ma-realize na weakness yung the failure to overcome his enemies. Hindi na overcome ni Jesus, yung enemies. Yan ang sinasabi ng mga kalaba ni Paul. Paul's insight though is that if those who crucified Jesus had truly understood who he was, they would never have killed him. Pero sabi niya, kung nakilala noong mga tao na pumapatay sa kanya, kung sino itong tao ito, hindi nila siya pinalay. Strength and weakness is a great paradox. Paradox, dahil binabanggit ang kalakasan at the same time binabanggit ang kahinaan. Pero ito ang ginagamit ni Paul. Huh? One that Paul celebrates elsewhere. In 2 Corinthians 12.10, For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weakness, insult, etc. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The paradox, weak because it is in the Lord Jesus Christ that he becomes strong. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. 
Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. Now we go to the Roman numeral number two. Calling of the humble. Sino itong mga tinawag ng Diyos? So, now he is referring to the congregation of Corinth. Sino ba kayo? Nung tinawag kayo? Sino ba kayo? Mga matatalino ba kayo? Nung, by human standard? Influential ba kayo? Makapangyarihan ba kayo? Noble birth ba kayo? Sabi, hindi marami. Paul asked the Corinth to evaluate their own ranks. Did they see a church filled with recognized wise men and women from influential, powerful people? Yun yung mga tinawag ng Diyos. Sino ba kayo nung tinawag kayo ng Diyos? Ito bang church na to ay punong-puno ng mga influential, powerful people, noble people? Hindi. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Pero, ginawa ito ng Diyos upang walang pwedeng magmalaki. Lahat galing sa Diyos. Lahat galing sa Diyos. Walang wala. Walang mga magigiting sa inyo. Ba? It, everything came from God. The application of this, this verse defies logic. Wouldn't God want a church full of the rich, powerful, and highly educated? Choosing the community's humble serves to shame the elite citizen of Corinth. Bakit kaya? Bakit kaya? We will see that in the next verse. So that nobody can boast. If there is anything that boasts, it should be you boast in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 28, God chose the lowly things of this world and despised things to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Everything was taken care of by God. Everything was given by God. Everything came from God. Paul insisted that God rather than favoring the godless world's elite had chosen the lowly things of this world to effect his plans. Para yung mga pinili ng Diyos na magkaroon ng role sa kanyang plano, the plan of God to bring back man to, he, to paradise. Yung mga role na yon ay binigay ng Diyos dun sa mga lowly things of this world. Does this mean that the church should not seek to add the influential? Of course not. But all must come to cross in humility, recognizing their spiritual proper, prop, poverty. There is no place for anyone to claim personal glory in his presence as they boast before him. Hindi pwede. Siyempre, pwede rin yung mga, mga may noble, rich, influential. But, the bottom line, they should come in humility. They should recognize that they are nothing. It's spiritual poverty. Dapat ganon. Hindi kiniklaim ang personal glory. Our salvation to the cross of Jesus is a matter work out without our prior approval. We had nothing to do with it. Rinano ng Diyos ang lahat from beginning to the end. But man is not part of the plan. It is coming all alone from God so that we have no place for boasting about saving ourselves. Verse 30 to 31. It is because of Him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Paul does not boast of his greatness, but of his weakness and the power of God. This is a glorying based in humility, not seeking a claim, but offering thanksgiving and praise to the one who saved us. Conclusion Martin Luther, the 16th century reformer, was inspired by this text in his Doctrine of the Cross. Merong itong doctrina, Doctrine of the Cross, Martin Luther. Luther found contrast between this way ordained by God and the human way, the doctrine of glory. 
kinukumpara ni Martin Luther yung doctrine of the cross which is the way ordained by God and the human way which is the doctrine of glory. He argued that the human doctrine of glory is centered on human wisdom that leads to blinding of hearts. Yan yung kanyang pinaliliwanag. It is centered on human wisdom, yung human doctrine. And it leads to blinding of hearts. However, yung, uh, yung divine doctrine, divine doctrine of the cross is centered on God's revelation of His suffering Son, which is, which softens hearts. The Christian message is still a scandalous stumbling block. <laughs> The Christian message is scandalous stumbling block. The central historical fact is that Jesus of Nazareth was executed as criminal would be on a shameful cross. It was a brutal affair. Yan parin scandalous, stumbling block. It did not seem like victory at the time, but a colossal defeat. Parang natalo. Yet, without the cross, there is no salvation. Today's church still confronts the dangers Paul warned about. The church may seek the world's approval as Luther and Paul thought the true way of salvation will seem foolish, weak, and shameful to the world. This scripture text challenges us to examine how much we have accommodated our priorities to the world. What elements of the world's doctrine of glory have we adopted? doctrines of glory. Instead, we should look to God who can be found in suffering and the cross. God's way seemed to foolish, seem foolish to a world impressed by cleverness and success. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this lesson. Lord, thank you for making clear to us that we must embrace the message of the cross that Jesus died, that Jesus resurrected, and that this brought salvation available to all nations and to all people. Help us in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, the last slide is an announcement, lesson number 11 of the second quarter, reminder of the call. Magandang umaga po at pagpalain kayo ng Diyos.